Morning all, it's Friday the 28th of July 2017 and it's been a bit of a wet night by the looks of things out there boys and girls. The rain has continued to plummet down, although it's dried up a bit this morning I must say uh, out here in Bracknell. The cat is quite happy to be sitting out there laying in the garden. She's gone to sleep again. <sighs> She's gone to sleep. Now, I did notice, actually, after I finished the show last night, uh, I went downstairs. And as usual, the cat was going round and round in her circles. And her little foot was bleeding. What happens when she goes round in the circles? Because she's a little bit, you know, gone up here. When she goes round in the circles, I noticed she, she doesn't pick her back foot up. It kind of stays on the ground and gets dragged around. She can walk. She can walk, you know, when she walks, she walks normally, all four paws are moving. But when she's going around in no circles, she doesn't bother to pick her back leg up. And she's got a little bit of a cut foot down there. I'm not quite sure what I can do with that. You can't exactly put a plaster on it, can you? Because she'll have that off straight away, you know. Like, oh, oh, oh. You know, they pick away. They do their claws with their... Well, she doesn't do it anymore. I have to get her claws cut. But when they're younger, they do their claws with their teeth, don't they? <clears throat> Probably a little bit like some of you. I've seen some of you on the train and on the brass. You know, uh, uh, uh. Oh, it's disgusting. Please don't pick noses and bite claws in front of people on trains and buses and places like that. Ghastly, dear. It's disgusting. It really is. Anyway, after I'd done the show last night, I popped up to my mate's house uh, to feed his cats. They were all up there, meowing away as I entered the car park. I uh, unset the alarm and uh, fed the cats, and that was all all right. Uh, had a little look in his back garden. He's got all lights around his back garden. Little uh, Around the fence, he's got little fairy lights, which are very nice. Once, now this is the second lot of fairy lights, because he didn't learn. I, I, when he bought the first lot, they were solar fairy, fairy lights. So you don't have to plug them in anywhere. So he put them up, and I looked at the quality of them. I thought, well, they're going to last about three months. I don't think they even lasted that. But after a week, you know, certain bulbs wouldn't come on anymore. Useless. So anyway, he sent those back and got some more expensive ones, which he's got all around the fence, which have been up there a couple of years now. And it's ever so nice, to be honest. All around the fence, little fairy lights right the way around them and uh, a big light out there as well. So I had a little look at that last night. I thought it was very pretty. Oh, I wonder if I turn the light off. Mind you, only LED bulbs. They hardly use anything. Done that. Came back here uh, and uh, watched a bit of telly. There's various programmes I'm watching at the moment, actually. Um, the Darkless. Anyone watch that? It's after Holby City on on uh, on Tuesday nights. Holby City's getting quite exciting. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, Lofty. Lofty fancied Dom, who's the gay character. We didn't know Lofty was a gay character. Anyway, I think he'd been trying to get with him. And then on Tuesday's programme... Dom kissed Lofty like like that, but Lofty pulled back, and he's like, "Oh, I thought you fancied me." Well, uh, not really. We're as friends, and he's he's he's. I don't know what's going on there. Very very interesting to see what's going on in there. Do you like Holby City? I bet you don't even watch it, do you? It's like the the Tuesday answer to Casualty, you know. Casualty does very well. Oh, Charlie, Charlie and Casualty. He's uh, the BBC's highest paid actor, isn't he? Good on you. He's a good actor. I like him. Um, then I watch uh, The Darkness, which is like a crime thing. Honestly, there were these, these little boys, uh, little boys driving cars and selling drugs and all this business. And they shot someone. They shot someone. As they were driving along, they come alongside him in this car and shot a, uh, shot this. No, it was shot, shot a woman. They shot a woman who then plowed. She didn't die. She then plowed into a bus stop and killed a man who happened to be a policeman waiting for a bus. So that was quite good. Well, not the fact that someone got shot, but, you know, I, when, when she was driving along, though, and this other car come alongside her and she looked at him. And he looked at her and got the gun out like that. And she just went like that. I mean, wouldn't you slam the brakes on? Or or put your foot down? Something like that, you know. Wouldn't you put your foot down to get away from it? No, she just sat there and looked at him. How strange and mis how strange and mysterious that is. I'd put me, I would have slammed my brakes on and he would have shot forward, you see. And then you could have gone the other way, couldn't you? You've got to think ahead. You know what the cars are like in London, my love. If you go drive to London, lock those doors and do your windows up. 
Because if the villains don't get you, the pollution will. Oh, it's awful. Sometimes I'm driving down that Euston Road on the way home from work on a on a Monday, Friday or Wednesday. And you open the window slightly and <laughs> ah, this pollution pours into the car a little bit like the pollution I was watching this morning on Netflix's programme, The Crown. Anyone watch that on Netflix? The Crown. Very, very good. It's all about, you know, Elizabeth and all that. Uh, so far, I've got to the bit. Uh, King George has now died. He died of cancer. They've been shooting some birds. And on today's programme, uh, they're trying to get Winston Churchill out of power. So the weather people have told him there's an anti-cyclone coming, which will trap all the pollution in. So I've got to the bit of where the smog come down. And then they came up to talk about you. Anyone watch that yet? It's an excellent series. On Netflix. I don't know if you can get it on DVD. Highly recommended. Highly recommended, that one. And one of the... Um, uh, going back to the first episode, which was... Uh, I think I'm on the third one now. They played that lovely hymn uh, as Winston Churchill came into... Uh, I think it was Westminster Abbey or might have been St Paul's Cathedral. Now, why did he go in there? Can't remember why he'd gone in there now. It was right at the beginning. It wasn't for the funeral of, of King George, because it was before that. Anyway, and, and, and the hymn is, I vow to thee my country. Do you like that one? I've got a bit here. Have a listen. It's lovely, lovely this is. Love it. Oh, it's a lovely hymn, that is. It really is. They tend to have it if there's like a big funeral or a big wedding and it's royal or prime ministerial. I think Margaret Thatcher had it at her, her funeral as well. Of course, Diana had it at her wedding. I don't know if they had it at her funeral, you know, Diane and uh, Charles there. But a beautiful hymn and they played it on the... Um, uh, on the on the Crown programme on Netflix with uh, little choir boys singing it and all that. Oh, very, very wonderful. So they're the programmes I'm watching at the moment. I'm very, very pleased to see that uh, they're going to give the Generation game another go. I know this was announced at the beginning of the week, and I'm, you know, I'm only just catching up with my news stories, to be honest. Um, but I used to love that TV series in the 1970s. <clears throat> First of all, of course, with the great Bruce Forsyth. We haven't heard... Uh, from from some time now. I'd like to see him do it one more time. I've got to be honest. I know he's in his 90s, but I think he could do it. I, I, I think he could do it. So I'd like to see the Generation game. Uh, started with Bruce Forsyth, and then it was Larry Grayson, and it was Bruce Forsyth again, and then it was Jim Davidson. Wasn't keen on Jim Davidson. But certainly Larry and Bruce. I've got the original theme for Bruce Forsyth's Generation here, uh, Generation's game here, at 1970s. Here we go. Listen. Life is the name of the game, and I want to play the game with you. Life can be terribly tame if you don't play the game with two. I want to play the game with you. Yes, Bruce Forsyth's Generation. I love that theme music. And when he came back in the uh, 19... 1990-ish, when he came back, they kept the same tune, but they jazzed it up a bit for the modern era. I also loved Larry Grayson during the Generation game. And now, so Bruce Forsyth left it. I think he went to London Weekend Television, didn't he? Oh, yeah, that's it. And he did Bruce's Big Night, I think, which was a bit of a failure. That didn't work. <clears throat> but nevertheless, he went to ITV and the BBC carried it on. There was no break the next year and they got Larry Grayson to do it. And when they first said that for, oh, oh you, no one can do it, only Bruce. How wrong I was. Larry Grayson made it his own programme. And again, a wonderful theme music. Here it is. Shut that door and enjoy the generation game. What's in store? The best of relations is our aim. Larry Grayson is here to play so. Shut that door. 
<laughs> we love it. We absolutely love the generation game, whether it was from uh, Bruce Forsyth or indeed Larry Grayson. So really pleased to see that coming back uh, with Mel and Sue, former British uh, Bake Off hosts. So I, I reckon they'll do a good job of that. I'm not quite sure who's going to be Bruce and who's going to be Anthea or whether they'll share the whole thing. It'll be very interesting. Anyway, we've got a call coming in. Good morning to best friend Ron. Look like you're calling in from Cyprus. Good morning. Hello from Cyprus. Hello. Hello from Cyprus. Well, you, Hello. You, How are you? You could sound a little bit more happy. I am very happy. Well, very, don't very sound it. You sound a, you sound it's very time to play the generation <clears throat> game. Do you like the Get did you do did you remember the generation game? Did you like it or not? No, I was born in the eighties, so I don't remember. It was it was on in the eighties, it was on in the nineties. Yeah, well, I don't remember it because I was young then. Oh, so was I. We used to be a Saturday. It used to be a Saturday night, and I'd be sitting. I had this little um, fold-out tray thing, and on a Saturday night, I'd sit on the floor in front next to my mum, who would be on the um, she'd be on the settee, but I, I'd want to sit on the floor for some reason. I don't know why. And I'd have this little tray that went over my legs with with two legs, and it you know so high. And mum would bring my tea in. It would be beans and sausages on a piece of French stick. Uh, and some cakes and some crisps. And we'd sit there watching Doctor Who, um, uh, The Duchess of Duke Street, The Generation Game, and The News, and something else. Maybe The Two Ronnies. Yeah, The Two Ronnies, I think, was the other thing. Oh, I like The Two Ronnies. It was very, very funny. What was your very Saturday nights indeed. like? Did you all watch the telly on a Saturday night or what? No, not really. Oh. No, we used to be at bank robbing. Bank ro Are you eating something? <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, I just had to, had to eat something, yeah. Well, can you so not eat while I'm you're not... talking on the phone to my millions of people watching um, all over the world? Eight. There's eight people watching. There's not eight people eight. watching. Get on with it, dear. So I'm looking out of my balcony, yes. and there's a swimming pool, and then there's a few lovely white houses, and then there's a sea. It's absolutely lovely. It's a gloriously sunny day. Absolutely beautiful. What's it like in what's it like in, uh, in It's Netherlands? a bit dreary today. There's uh, let me have a look. It's brightening up outside now. We had a little bit more rain last night, so your garden's all right, the cats are all right. I went up to visit them good, yesterday. Good, 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 good. Um and uh, everything's fine, really. I can't remember if I left the back lights on last night. You know your back lights in your garden? Because I had a quick look out there and as as you know, I sent you a little video. What, the big of one? I might have might have left the little the lights light. on. I don't know, but I'll I'll go and check that out. They're only LEDs, aren't they? The the big one the big one is, yeah, the the the, the ones around the, the fairy lights stay on and go off and stay on and go off by themselves. Oh, do they? The, oh the, the, right, the, okay. The, yeah. Okay, I didn't know but that. But there's a big light. Yes. There's a big light that you switch on and switch off and the switch is on the That's right, the yeah, that's the, door, the, that's the one I put side. on, yeah. I think I don't know if I put that off uh, or not, but I'll see when I get up there. It won't be long. I should be going up there straight well, after if, today's if worldwide programme. Bill, if, I have a, if I have a high electricity bill this month, I know where to come. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. Who did you fly with out there? Lufthansa. Lufthansa! Ah! Yes, our German friends, Lufthansa! Mm. Well, you get on with your breakfast because this is a particularly boring call from you today. I have to say, there's no excitement oh. in your voice whatsoever. You you sound absolutely bored to tears this morning. I was very drunk last night. That's why I've got a bit of a headache. Because I was actually going to ask you to tone it down a bit while turn I was watching. Turn it down? What do you mean, turn it down? Tone. We're not tone. all drunkards tone. like yourselves. Tone it down. There's Not no tone toning it. down going on. Go and enjoy your beach. Goodbye. We will do. Thank you. Bye bye. Cheerio. <laughs> cool. That was a. Weren't that an hour? Do you know how sometimes you get people who do hard phone calls? Uh, God, he sounded bored to tears, didn't he? Well, I'm glad I'm not there. Oh, God. A little bit more excitement in your voice. There's another one who calls in like that. Miserable as Sid. Don't he sound miserable? You've got to be a little bit excited if you're going to call in. For God's sake, man. What's wrong with you this morning? Phone line is open if you want to call in, boys and girls. 020 3477 But for Christ's sake, sound like you've got a little bit of life in you, wouldn't you? I mean, can you imagine if I sat here like this? 
Oh, hello, and welcome to the show. Well, I've got some news to talk to you about today. Oh, God, how boring is that? Blimey. Let's say hello to some people this morning. Good morning to the lovely Shania, who's just woken up, and I've popped onto her little computer screen, her little, little iPhone. Am I in bed with you in, with your iPhone or, or a tablet of some device? Some device like that, Shania. Good morning, Shania. Gustav's there, says, Darling Chris, I was late logging in last night, but I'm all yours this morning. I've got some very good news for you, our, um, uh, Gustav. Because you mentioned, uh, I'm all yours this morning. Please tell your viewers that Audi have a great bargain of 20 scotch eggs for a fiver. Spread the word. Going fast. Well, even better news for you, uh, Gustav, because you are one of Audi's favourite shoppers. Uh, did you not get an award for visiting their shops the most times? Eh? Is that right, Gustav? Well, look at this. In this sort of morning's super soar away sun. A savvy shopper has found a way to get his Audi grocers deli groceries delivered. And it could work out cheaper than ordering the same basket of shopping from Tesco's. This bloke, uh, founder of Latest Deals, revealed to The Sun Online how he managed to place an order on his phone and get it delivered even before he was out of bed. But there is a catch. Oh, there's always a catch. You get nothing for nothing in this world. Absolutely. He hired someone to do the shopping and bring it home. And the total price worked out less than Tesco's. <laughs> Audi doesn't have a home delivery service for groceries. So the 26-year-old bargain hunter uh, used a third party. Oh, hang on a minute. Where's that gone now? It's, uh, my, my computer just jumped down then. How does that happen? Let's, let's go back a bit. The trick only works in London. Oh, it'd be no good out of here for us here. <laughs> won't won't happen out here, I'm afraid. The trick only works in London and shoppers can order a maximum of 20 items. Audi does not have a home delivery service for groceries, so the 26-year-old bargain hunter used a third-party courier to place his order. He hired someone to do the shopping and bring it home, and the total price worked out at less than Tesco's. Tom says you can hire someone to do your shopping and bring it to your door, and it will still be cheaper than Tesco's. That saving's big. The way it works is that you tell the courier where you want them to go, your local Audi, and then what you want them to buy. You make a detailed shopping list, place the order, and off they go. Tom experimented with two bicycle courier services, TaskRabbit and QuipQuib. I've never heard of those two, have you? Oh, have you seen them on the roads in London? The bicycle courier things. I mean, it's bad enough with this, but they've now got these great big boxes on the back of their bikes, which are about three times the size of the, the, the width of the bike. No, sorry, about three times the width of the person on the bike, it, unless they're really fat. Unless they're really fat, would it be even, even perhaps not so big? Um... They cost, let's have a look, uh, the bicycle courier services cost between five and seven pounds. The price varies depending on the distance of the supermarket from your home. Yet because Audi's prices are so much cheaper, it meant the total cost worked out less than doing a shop at Tesco's. So there you go. If you want your stuff delivered from Audi, try one of the courier services, one of the little people on the bike. <clears throat> Great way to keep fit, isn't it? I don't suppose any of these couriers on their little bicycles, will ever have heart attacks or anything like that. Maybe lung cancer. Oh, yeah, you're breathing in all those diesels all the time, aren't you? Well, until 2040, when we all get electric cars, I can't wait. I'd love an electric car. I really would. Actually, Tesla. Tesla? 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 I never get that right. Tesla. I think it's Tesla. Tesla. They've got a, a new... Is it a, a, a Tesla 3 Series or a Tesla 30? I think, which is about which is on the same pricing scale as sort of a reasonably um, priced mid-range, mid mid mid-priced car here in the UK. That's that's out now, isn't it? Mm. Right. So, Gustav, good news for you there. You'll be able to soon send a boy around to Audi to get your shopping for you. You lazy old git. Get out of bed for Christ's sake. Ten past ten in the morning. I was up at half eight. Half past eight I was up. De dealt with the cat mess downstairs, had my breakfast, watched a little bit of The Crown, and now I'm up here. Hmm, thank you. Good morning, Antonio. Antonio, Antonio. Nice to see you. You're over soon, aren't you, Antonio, for another little holiday? I do hope you're gracious with your presence by singing at the karaoke. 
Yes, we got. Don't forget, we got the special charity karaoke uh, tomorrow night, boys and girls. That's in Wokingham. Here's the poster here. Um, the karaoke tomorrow night. That's Saturday, the 29th of July, at the Fox and Flower Pot which is in Woking, Surrey, at the Goldsworth Park Centre, which literally is in the Waitrose car park in Woking. It is actually in the car park, right on the edge of it. So uh, if you've got uh, some time, do come along tomorrow and uh, bring some spare cash because we're going to do some money making for the Barry Manilow Music Project. Cancer Research and Dogs Trust. That's tomorrow night, Saturday the 29th of July 2017 from 8 o'clock. All right, boys and girls, so looking forward to doing that tomorrow night. Of course, tonight we've got the karaoke in Central Station, as always. That's in King's Cross, uh, London, starts at 8.30 and finishes at midnight. All right. Good morning to Elaine. A big morning hug for you. Thank you very much, Elaine. I do like a hug. I do like our Ray Reynolds is there. Good morning, viewers from Scuttle Vision, Benny Hill's own station run by Fred Scuttle. The Scuttle Vision, that sounds quite good, doesn't it? Morning to Adam the Plumber. Hope you're well this morning, Adam. Um, let's see. Uh, Adam's back at work now, I'm pleased to see. Still feeling a bit rough. Uh, he's had a bit of a stomach problem, isn't he? You've, you've got a bit of a little tummy bug going around there, I think, Adam, haven't you? So I hope you get better soon. Uh, by the way, thank you. A couple of you have been sharing the today's programme on your various Facebook walls. So thank you very much for that. Much appreciated. The lovely Merlin is with us this morning. Uh, what radio are you doing, Merlin, now? Are you on a um, are you on a community station? ILR, something like that, I think you are, aren't you? Good morning to you, Merlin. Uh, Diane's there. Morning, Diane. Diane. Jason Alexander's there, who says, shut that door and enjoy the generation game. Yeah, we didn't quite finish the end of that story, did we? Um, the Melon Sue generation game. We haven't got a date yet. I, I would assume, um, I would assume, I would assume September-ish time. I would have thought. I don't know. Uh, it's been commissioned for initial four-week episode run. So I've only commissioned four to see how it goes. I suppose. Uh, and the new show will combine all aspects of the original series with some new games. So I can't wait for that, actually. BBC Studios said audiences had identified the Generation game as the TV show that viewers most wanted to see back on their screens. I wonder what you'd like to see back on your screen as perhaps a game show. Hmm? I'd like to see The Golden Shot. The Golden Shot, that was an excellent programme, wasn't it? Where they had the crossbow up a bit, left a bit, right a bit, fire, and the crossbow would fire into a target, and at the end of the show it was, a, was an apple. And there'd be a string going for the apple. And if you fired your crossbow right in the middle of the apple and it would go break the string and money would come out. 50 quid. <laughs> that was the jackpot. 50 quid. Uh, late 1960s, I think early 1970s. 50 quid was the jackpot, which was actually an awful lot of money in those days. Uh, produced uh, by uh, ATV, of course, in the Midlands. An excellent show. So I'd like to see that as well. What would you like to see back on the telly? Any programmes at all like that? Quiz shows? Perhaps something else? You know, perhaps uh, documentaries? I'm glad they brought back Poldark, which I'm really enjoying on Sunday nights. Um, but the Generation Game, absolutely. I'd love to see that back. And also the Golden Shot, I think. Um, the story continues on the BBC website. The show sees pairs of family members across generations take part in performance and task bait by based games with the ultimate goal of facing a conveyor belt. Actually, I'd like to go on there with my nephew, Jimmy. I think we'd be excellent at that. Me and Jimmy Butler on the generation game. Oh, we're going to reply for that. He'd, he'd do that with me. <laughs> Hang on, let me write that down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write in about that generation game. <laughs> Chris and Jimmy. I wonder if we could get on there. That would be excellent, wouldn't it? Chris Reardon and Jimmy Butler on the Generation Game. Ba -ba -da 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 -da. And I want to play the game with you. The conveyor belt, that was like a, a little hole in the wall, you see. If you don't know what this is, I'll tell you now. The conveyor belt, that was right at the end of the show. And it would be a hole in the wall. You'd go around the back, sit there in front of the hole. So the camera could see you sitting behind this hole. And in front of you would go various things on a conveyor belt, like a, a cuddly toy that would go past, uh, a kettle, things like that, you know, 
board games, and then a buzzer would go, and it was excellent music, the conveyor belt music. Really, real lift music, a bit like the music you get uh, right at the beginning when I'm running the early part of the countdown from five minutes to about three minutes, I think. That bit there right at the beginning, similar music to that. And then uh, a buzzer would go off, and then you'd be brought round the front, and you'd then get, I think, a minute to remember as many things that you'd seen going past you. Oh, it was excellent. We loved the generation game, yes. It's a memory test, the conveyor belt, whereby the winning match pa uh, pair watches prizes pass on the belt before attempting to remember each one to win it, from household appliances to the infamous uh, cuddly toy. So, yes, yeah, we'll give that a go. Looking forward to the Generation game, and hopefully we'll get a date soon for that one, all right? Uh, good morning, it's Christopher Woodhouse. Morning, Chris, who says, uh, have a sore throat today, so won't be out tonight. Hope you have a lovely weekend. Oh, you rest it, boy. You rest it. Ah, there's my nephew there. Is that Pigeon Ron? Pigeon Ron was on the phone earlier. That's correct, Jimmy. He wasn't sounding too happy, though, this morning, was he, poor old soul? Shouldn't be out drinking so much at night time, should they? Uh, Ray says, good morning to Ronnie in Cyprus. I can't remember. Beat the clock. Now, I don't remember that one, of course. Um, it was with Bruce Forsyth on ITV's Sunday night at the London Playdo. Oh, do you remember the music to that? Oh, I wonder if I can find it for you. One moment, please. It's all instant music, isn't it? Marvellous. Uh, you can dial up any sort of uh, TV theme or piece of music, can't you? London Palade. E, um, theme, maybe? Let's try that. Let's see what comes up on that one. Oh, hang on a minute. No, that's not worked. Let's try that. Sunday night at the London... Oh, there it is. Sunday night at the London Palladium theme. Is it there? Here it is. Here it is. One moment, please. Uh, let's try this one. No, that's the new version. Oh, no, we can't have the new version, dear. Just a minute now, just a minute. Let's try that one. Let's try Here's the old one. Here we, here we go. Here we go. Val Parnell, Sunday night at the London Palladium. I love it. La 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 la. Oh, isn't that lovely? That's proper music, isn't it? Proper music. That's the sort of thing I have playing in the car. Honestly, when I'm in my car driving to and from work, if I've not got talk on, I generally have something classical on. This morning, funnily enough, I downloaded Mozart's Requiem Number no. Two in D minor, which I, I was it was on the Crown. I was watching the Crown this morning before I came up to talk to you, one of the Netflix programs, and uh, that that bit of music came on. I think, it, or was it, or was I watching it? Was it? Uh, yeah, I'm sure it was that what I was watching. Yeah, I'm sure it was that. Uh, and I thought, oh, I love that. So I've downloaded it. I keep downloading classical music at the moment. My tastes have changed slightly. And let's be honest, it's so much better than that Beyonce, dear. Beyonce, you know, coming on the stage with breasts and stomachs hanging out. Dear me, no thank you. That's when everyone dressed properly in suits, playing their musical instruments. Mm, thank you very much. Um, good morning to Timothy Thomas. Good morning, Timothy. I'm in bed with you today, am I, Timothy? Well, at last. How many years has that taken? <laughs> I'm in bed with Timothy Thomas this morning, having my breakfast to your dulcet tones, then lunch in the garden and supper on the roof. Oh, you have a, don't you have a wonderful time there? You have an easy life, don't you, Tim? Mind you, you've worked for it. Same as me. Two nights off at the moment, hopefully three next year. Oh, that might happen a little bit earlier. I don't know yet. Don't know yet. <clears throat> oh, there we are. Ronnie has realised, sorry, dear, I'm still half asleep, was drunk last night. Well, I think we all know that, my love. <coughs> oh, I hate being drunk. Do you know I haven't been drunk for years? I don't like being drunk. You know, when you... <clears throat> Maybe a bit Mary's OK, but you know, like, people get absolutely paralytic, don't they? How is that fun? I don't understand how that's fun. I really don't. John says, good morning. Keep your distance. I've got a chest infection. Oh, sorry, John. 
John Springate, a famous person, has appeared on my wall. Wow. John was in the Glitter Band, plays the guitar, goes out and does um, cabaret now, all over the place. Wonderful man. And a lovely, lovely man. You'll love me hearing this. It's all right, I'm not going to ask for anything, John. I won't ask for something for nothing. I'm just telling you how it is. He's a lovely man, John Springer. A really nice man to work with. Good morning, John. I hope you get better soon. Are we on the antibiotics? Because we were talking about that on last night's show. They're now saying, don't finish them. <laughs> how many years have we all been told to finish antibiotics in case it comes back? Oh, it's, well, you never know who to believe, do you? You really don't. Good morning to Peter Hyde. Good morning, Peter. Um, take your pick. Oh, yes, please. Take your pick. Open the box. Take the money. Now, take your pick. OK, so the contestant would be asked questions by Huey Green, I think it was. And then there would be boxes behind them. OK, say 10 boxes. All right. This is take your pick. This was a game show. And <clears throat> you would be offered a box. I don't I'm not quite sure of the exact format now, but Huey Green would say, OK, uh, you've gone for box number five or something. I think this is roughly right. He said, I'll tell you what. I'll buy the box off you for 20 pounds. And the contestant would say, oh, I don't know, 20. But no, no, I'm, I, no, I don't want it. Oh, OK, 25 pounds. Oh, 25 pounds. And that was a lot of money in those days. 25 minutes was a 25 pounds was an awful lot of money in the 60s. And the contestant might say, oh, no. Nah. And he might say, oh, I'll take the money. And, and, and the audience would be shouting either, take the money or open the box. And then somebody might get to 30 pounds. No, no, I don't want it. I want to open the box. OK, open the box. And he might open the box and there might be a can of baked beans in there. Or there might be... Uh, a holiday for two in Barbados. See that? So that was take your pick, an ex and an excellent idea, John. I'd like to see take your pick down. Golden balls. Now I don't remember that one, Peter. Don't remember golden balls. Um, no. Jason says hello, Ginger. Is that a game, or are you saying hello to someone? <laughs> <laughs> Jason, are you with us, dear? Come on. Wakey, wakey. There's a lot of people half asleep this morning. And it's 23 minutes past 10 in the morning. Come on, wake up, for God's sake, man. Dear me. Craig, good morning, Craig. Bullseye. Now, that was a good one. I enjoyed Bullseye. Really did. Bull bully. Because he had a really dry sense of humour, didn't he? He rarely laughed or smiled. He just he just gave out the, the, the jokes. And what was his name? Bullseye host. Uh, I, I liked him. Hang on. <clears throat> Let's have a look for you. Bullseye host. Uh, Jim Bowen. He was good. He was good. The, tr the thing is, you know, bringing back a lot of these shows, for example, Craig uh, Bullseye, as you mentioned there, you'd want the same host, wouldn't you? It's like when uh, Catchphrase, which is back on the telly with that young bloke. I liked it with the old bloke. Now, again, what, what was the name of the original host of Catchphrase? Hang on. <clears throat> I thought the original bloke was good. Catchphrase, here we go. Uh, British TV series. Um, Roy Walker. Roy Walker hosted 1986 to 1999. Now, Roy Walker, I liked Roy Walker. Now, it's with Stephen Mulhern, isn't it? Who's who's OK, but it's not Roy Walker. And of course, I think when we see these quiz shows and stuff like that and then they change the host, it completely changes it. Although it did work for the generation game going from Bruce Forsyth to Larry Grayson. But for me, a lot, a lot of the time it doesn't work. I want to see that original host and I don't care that he's 20 years older. That doesn't bother me at all. You want to see it with the original host, don't you? Hmm. Um, Christopher says, oh, hang on a minute, Would, uh, Chris reckons I'd be funny to see, to see, uh, to see drunk. Oh, no, no, it's not funny. I don't like being drunk, Chris. I wouldn't get drunk just so that you could see me drunk. <laughs> I don't like the feeling. I hate it. And you close your eyes. Oh, oh, no, no, not for me at all. Not for me at all. 
Uh, open a box, yes. Tim says, I take the money. A lifestyle to maintain, don't you know? I know you've got a very expensive lifestyle, haven't you, Tim? I know that for a fact. Yes, expensive restaurants. And I have a very cheap lifestyle. That's the absolute truth of it. Oh, talking of cheap lifestyles, I haven't showed you my stuff, have I? I've been shopping. Oh, yes, because there's some sales on at the moment. And I've said before, never, ever pay the full price for designer clothes. We've got sales on at the moment, 50% sales. So I have ordered, first of all, a pair of trainers from Ralph Lauren. Look at this. Oh, oh, and it all comes in a nice big box. Look at that. Love. Look how they come. Not like going down the JD Sports, is it? Eh? Although you do get some nice fellas in there trying on various clothes, don't you? Look at look at a nice little bit of paper wrapped in plastic bags. Look at this. Now these were forty-two pounds. It's not bad, is it? A pair of trainers. Usual price, uh, I think one hundred and ten, or maybe ninety something. I would not pay a hundred pounds for a pair of trainers. Never in a million years. My nephew Jimmy, he bought trainers once, one hundred and fifty quid for a pair of trainers. Are you serious? No. Look at that. Lovely. Look. Look Look how well packed they are. There they are. Mm. Nice smell. They're my new trainers. Aren't they nice? Look at those. I've. Do you remember those trainers that I wore for years and years that were falling apart? Well, guess what? I chucked them away last week. I took the, the bottom. The bottom was hanging off. <laughs> It'd been like that for a year. I'll get a bit from my glue gun and stick it back on. <laughs> that would last a few months and it would start flapping again. Literally, and as you dragged along the floor, you could feel feel the bottom of the trainer where, where a bit had come off dragging. Now, oh, they're a funny bottom. They're hard. It's a funny bottom on shoes, isn't it? Anyway, they're my Ralph Lauren trainers, OK? £42 they were. Half price. And I got a pair for my mate as well. And... My new Ted Baker shirts have arrived. Oh, I was going to wear one this morning, wasn't I? Here's the new, the Ted Baker shirts. All comes in a lovely box. Look how it's delivered. Free delivery. Free delivery, thank you. And you open the box. Look at this, Ted Baker. And here are my two lovely new shirts. Again, half price. Usual price, I think, of these is about 100 quid. And again, no way I'd pay £100 for a shirt. No way at all. Tim, who's watching the show this morning, he'd spend two, three, four hundred pounds on a shirt. More money than cents, dear. Four hundred pound on a shirt, my love. Serious. So here my new t So these were forty-two pound each. Look at those. Can you see the pattern? And that lovely. Look at that. They're little little flowers. I was going to wear one this morning. There we are. That's that's that one. But I think I, pref I my favourite one is this. Look at this cut. Look at the colour on this. Look at that. It's like a blue and pink in there. And as I say, these were both half price. So I'm very, very pleased uh, with my purchases. I don't do an awful lot of clothes shopping myself. Uh, what I do is a couple of times a year, uh, uh, generally around my birthday and uh, just after Christmas, because you, we wait for the sales. Me and my mate, we go down to Oxford. Oh, we got a new... That reminds me, I meant to tell him there's a shopping place in Portsmouth as well so we might try that one next time but usually <clears throat> we go down to the designer outlet place in Bicester but but Bista uh, which is in Oxfordshire uh, we take a drive down there for the whole day and we do a big shop down there we, we buy loads of stuff that's all on sale you see and that that usually comes just after Christmas we get we actually get letters for emails from Ted Baker or Ralph Lauren, and they tell you when the when the thing's coming on, you see. It's good, isn't it? It's good. Um, let's have a look. <clears throat> da -ba -ba. Uh, let's just go back there, back a little bit more. Where are we now? Oh, we'll not be drunk. No, that's incorrect. Uh, good morning to Wendy, who joins us this morning. Morning, Wendy. She must be off to work soon. Morning, Wendy. Uh, Tim said I'd take the money. I've said that. Good morning, Wendy. Uh, where are we? Ah, there we go. Shania says, I like Dow's supermarket sweep. Every time you hear the beep, boop, boop, is Dow's supermarket sweep. Yeah, that was quite good, wasn't it? He's had a lot of work done for his face, hasn't he? Old Dow Winton. I think he was a mobile DJ at one, at one point, wasn't he? I'm sure he was. Uh, Ray Reynolds, double your money. Now, I, again... That one, Ray, uh, I have very, very limited knowledge of that one, actually, Double Your Money. I can just about remember it, but I can't remember the format of that one. 
other than they offer you to double your money, don't they? Yes. Uh, Richard says, um, ah, good morning, Richard. Uh, we're on at Richard's workplace this morning. So good morning to anyone working with Richard this morning. Morning, everyone. What do you do anyway? Uh, he hates that spinning feeling when drunk in bed. Does it happen very often, does it, Richard? You look a little bit like you like a good drink now and again. Would I be right in saying that, lovey? Would I be right perhaps on a Saturday night when the children are in bed? <laughs> Rarely touch drink these days. I'm sure you have one now and again. Gustav says, don't you get Ralph Lauren in Debenhams? Uh, well, I, d I don't know, actually. I mean, you want to spell it right for a, for a start, Gustav? Can you not have, can you not do spelling? I bet you went to an awful school, didn't you? One of those awful, dreadful, comprehensive places, did you go? Did you really? I went to London Oratory in Fulham. Thank you very much, yes. Where did you go, my love? Elliot School in Putney. Something like that, was it? Oh, ghastly place. Um, <clears throat> Chris says, well, I don't drink, smoke or take drugs. Love the trainers. Do you like those? The only thing is I don't feel I should be wearing trainers when I'm on the stage at Central Station, because it's a little bit more showy there. It's all right on a Saturday night when we're doing um, uh, hosting, but not for the karaoke. It's a bit... Do you know what I mean? I just feel I should be dressed in a certain way doing that karaoke, although not so much down the, the Sunday one. Oh, I've had the posters redone. Here, look. The posters have been redone for Sunday night's karaoke. Ignore that in the middle. You'd think that was a label, wouldn't you? It's not. I mean, how stupid is that? They actually print that on there, that thing there. That's only on the top one. And the rest of them are, are without that. But uh, the reason these were printed is because several, not just one person. I mean, this is how pathetic people are, especially Paul Knight. I put Paul Knight mentioned this. And who else mentioned I can't remember. I think it might have been James T, actually, the lovely James T. Uh, but I've had to have these redone because on the original ones, there was an apostrophe where it said Sundays. And people, people, certain people didn't come out and say how good the night was or how much they enjoyed the karaoke or it was nice to meet me. No, excuse me, can we have a word? Yeah, there's no apostrophe. I'm like, what do you mean no apostrophe? You've got an apostrophe where it says Sundays and it shouldn't be there. So I've had to have the blooming things redone. <laughs> They just look for faults, don't they? No apostrophe. So there we are. The apostrophe has gone. I hope that's satisfied all of you. Dear me. Moan, moan, moan all the time, don't they? Um, Gustav said, oh, oh, Richard smokes. Oh, you've got to give that up, Richard. I used to smoke 40 cigarettes a day. That's true, that is. Yeah, I gave up about 28 years ago now. I wouldn't go near a cigarette now. It was just horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Gustav says, Ted Baker, are they Debenhams as well? Well, maybe they are, dear. Maybe they are, but let's be honest, Gustav, I look good in them. Unlike some of those strange clothes that you... What are you God knows what you're going to wear tonight. Are you in tonight? What have you decided to wear for us tonight? A shock us all. What was that little grey shorts and top thing you had on the other day? Don't you think you're a bit old to be wearing that sort of thing, lovey? Huh? Get yourself a pair of trousers and a jacket, man. The same as the rest of us oldies. Dear me. Uh, <laughs> Gustav says the only difference in education is that I left with actual qualifications. Well, so did I. Physics and English. O levels. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Richard says, uh, got your headphones on. No one here. Oh, I thought you. I thought it was on a big screen somewhere. Or something like that, um, uh, Richard. Very disappointed to hear that you're on your own there. Never mind. Never mind. Now, do you like spiders? This was in Thursday's Daily Mail. I sh I'm going to shut... Warning! Warning! Uh, 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 uh. I'm going to show you a picture of a very large spider in a moment. Possibly one that's waiting under your bed. Shania, if you're still in bed, or anyone else who's watching me on a small iPhone in their beds. <clears throat> it's the last thing you need to do when you're trying to work up an appetite. The almighty spider appeared on one couple's... Oh, this has got to be Australia, isn't it? Yes, it is. On one couple's back door as they cooked a meal. Uh, a photo of the dinner plate spider is a huntsman spider. They get very big when it appeared at their property in Mount Colum in Queensland. Although Australians are fairly used to spiders, uh, this monster was bigger than usual. 
The lady said they their spider became agitated after they closed the door and cut off two of its legs. <laughs> That's cruelty against spiders. That really is. Shocking. She said, it's massive and it was mean. My boyfriend tried to squish it in the door, but the spider was smart. The door only claimed two of its legs and it dropped and ran into the garden. She said she has nicknamed the creepy crawly Aragog after the giant flesh-eating spider in the Harry Potter boots, uh, books. Male huntsman spiders can reach a leg span of 12 inches, man. That's that. 12. What do you mean, what is it, decimal? What, centimetres? I don't know what that is in centimetres. 12 inches, dear. Look it up. We don't do centimetres here. This is the UK. This is not part of Europe, my loves. We are imperial here and we're still doing inches. There's something very different about six inches and ten centimetres, isn't there? What have you got? Ten centimetres. Go away. Go away, dear. Um, they they have a toxic bike that can cause painful swelling, but it won't kill you. I don't think it's poisonous. I don't think it is poisonous, actually. I think that's incorrect. Several have been found in the UK after hitching a ride. Oh, my God, blimey. Don't want any of those nice, nasty spiders here. I think if you check that, <clears throat> huntsman spiders, that you won't die from a bite, but they are nicely bites. It's something very unnatural. I'm sorry about spiders with teeth, isn't there, really? I do keep an eye out for spiders. and I don't like them at all, do they? They are very scary things. Right, you want to see the picture? Look at this, mate. Look at the size of that thing. Can you see that? There it is. Look. Imagine coming home and finding that on your door, waiting outside to eat you. Yes. Very, very scary. Anyone else want to call in? I'm going to phone, close the phone lines in a moment. 0208 144 is my local uh, London number. Or you can Skype in, of course. Uh, Skype in number. Why has that gone dark? Have I gone dark? Is that better? There we are. Skype in number. Oh, hang on. I've got the blooming auto thing on, haven't I? That's why it's going dark. Uh, Skype in on United Kingdom Talk. That's the Skype in number, OK? Tim says, apostrophe gate. Just what were you saying about troublesome Facebookers? Some people will find anything to moan about. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. They moan and they moan and they moan, Tim. On that subject, I'm glad you brought that up, actually. Oh, hang on. Someone sent a private message. What's this? Uh, oh, poor old Richard. He just sent me. I can't show you, it, unfortunately. He's just sent me a picture. He's sitting in that office on his own. A friend of mine, <clears throat> a couple of days ago, uh, has had come off Facebook, but he's gone back on there again because he's fed up with the vile people. You know, they're the, the sort of people that see you post a post, whether a serious post or perhaps um, a tongue-in-cheek post. Most of my posts are actually tongue-in-cheek. There was one I posted the other night And it was a repost of a article from The Sun. And it was about Lord Sugar calling for Jeremy Corbyn to resign after a dramatic student debt uter. So I reposted this. And my headline on top of that was, Ah, all my younger student e type friends will be pleased they voted for Jezza. And then I posted the thing. And I thought no more of it. Well... Some of the comments underneath there, which I've still got there, I've left it up there, you can have a look yourself if you want to, are really something else. Some of them are quite nasty. Some of them have got swearing in. And I'm thinking, why have you posted that? Or why have you posted your swearing or, or vileness on my wall? I mean... Do what you like on your own walls. But I posted that, you know, as a little bit tongue in cheek, as normally I do. You know, I'm not particularly serious about most things. Sometimes when I post things up there, then then it's supposed to be taken in sort of a sense of humour type way. But often it's not. And I thought about what my mate said the other night, that he was coming off Facebook because he was fed, fed up with vileness. And I posted this the other night. 
A very good friend of mine said to me, watching people's Facebook updates and replies to others' posts, there are people who we are friends with on Facebook that you just wouldn't want to be friends with in real life. And he's absolutely right, isn't he? So why are we their friends on Facebook, I carry on? He's been unfriending and blocking some over the last few days. I've pondered over this and he's absolutely right. I do not seek to row with anyone on here, but sometimes I may post something that others may not agree with, so they attack me or the post on my own wall. I don't think I've ever done that. You know, if I've seen something that I find upsetting, um, what, what, what's something that upsets me? Abortions. I'm totally anti-abortion. Sometimes you see people on there pro-abortion. I don't comment. I, I, I don't join in the conversation. I just go past it. That That's probably my biggest, biggest one, that one, OK? Uh, animal cruelty. You know, that, that's another one I really don't like. Um, if I see someone uh, eating lamb or something like you see, I consider eating meat a cruelty now as well. But I, I, I don't comment unless it's tongue in cheek. Yeah. But some people seem to think they have some God given right to post replies to your stuff on your wall. And it's some of it's really vile, really vile. And I don't understand what, how that is. You just wouldn't do it in public. If you saw something going on in public, you wouldn't say anything, would you? You just walk away or go past. Not on Facebook. Um, I go on to say, if I see something I don't like, I move on. I don't comment. I'm going to do as he does from now on. There's too much vileness and nastiness on Facebook. I don't want to see it anymore. And I really don't. In future, I'll just unfriend or the worst case is block. Why be friends with someone who you don't like the thoughts of? And I'm sure you've got some on your wall as well. So you're watching what goes on and they've posted something. Like, oh, that's really awful or really horrible. Is that what sort of person you are? Then why are we still friends with them? So I've put, I've just done friends or in the worst cases block. Why be friends with someone who you don't like the thoughts of? This includes the idiots with no sense of humour who are permanently offended by everything. And you, you know that. <clears throat> there are people who are absolutely offended left, right and centre all the time. I did unblock someone. I did unblock someone. Um, I'd gone into a bit of a conversation the other day about universities and how I thought in a lot of cases it's a complete and utter waste of time. These kids go through university, they end up with 40, 50, 60,000 pounds worth of debt and end up working in a shop. Now, there's nothing wrong with working in a shop. If you want to work in a shop, then that's fine. So what was the point in spending 60,000 pounds in university? If you're going to end up in a shop. And I said that years ago when I was younger, we weren't all pushed to go to university. Some of us were advised, but we weren't all pushed. Generally, that's changed. So everyone's now pushed to go to university. I think it's a damn waste of time. It's a blooming waste of time. And um, this bloke came on there and I can't remember what the subject was. It was it was it was to do with the Jezza thing. It was to do with the Jezza thing that I'd reposted. Uh, and then he's and then he came out with, uh, but you wouldn't have the intelligence to go to university anyway. Well, you're probably absolutely right. I don't I, I, I'm not an intelligent person. I do not class myself as intelligent. However. I can read. And I have got common sense. And when you talk to some of the people coming out of university now, unless it's written down in a book in black and white, they haven't got a bloody clue what to do. They have, not, not, not everyone, don't, don't be silly, I'm not including everyone in that, you know, but a lot of people come out of university, they have no common sense. They have no life skills whatsoever. And then he said that I wouldn't have the, uh, uh, the brains to go to university. Well, of course I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. I have no interest in going to university. So he came back with that and I looked at it and I thought, you're not a nice person. I just blocked him and that was it. And I'm going to do that more often now. 
because I'm fed up with the vileness that goes around on this Facebook. It's it's created just awfulness, isn't it? And it's the same with the crime and that, where Twitter and all that. I think a lot of these criminals and gangs of people are all connected by Twitter. And they're all quickly, something going on here, let's all meet. And they all pop down to, I don't know, places and meet up and carry out ghastly things. So I don't know what you think about that. Do you remove people? I know that people have culls. But sometimes I, I, I do see the the little message. They put up a little message. Having a cull this morning. If you've survived, well done. Well, that to me is just asking for trouble. And I unfriend them straight away. What do you mean you're having a cull? And I'm lucky to have been left as one of your friends. I don't think so, sunshine. Goodbye. And then a while later, you'll get a little message. Did I do something to upset you? <laughs> you got to get in first, haven't you? You got to get in first. Let's um, let's have a look here. Um, do 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 do. Uh, there we are. Chris says that's true. Chris, I don't like to row with anyone. If I see something I like that, I just ignore it and don't comment on that. That's right, Chris. You know why do they do it? Why do they do it? Richard's talking about the uh, the left wing. Well, it's not just necessarily left. Uh, Richard, there's lots of people about all. Uh, Richard agrees about unis as well. What is the point? We have kids study them to become doctors, then we import doctors from abroad. It's terrible, isn't it? James says uh, only 5% used to go to university. That figure is now 45%. There simply aren't enough graduate jobs. Exactly. This is exactly what I think, James. All that money. You, you you come out of basically school with a £50,000 debt. I mean, I cannot imagine that. Owing £50,000 at 20 years old. Gosh, how did it come to that? And I think one of the reasons is that there's there's too many people going. We can't afford to send... When, when there was only like 5% of the population, we could all afford to chip in a little bit and send them. You know, the cleverest of people. And some people would say, well, it's all about giving the same opportunity to everyone. Well, yeah, but not everyone is, is, is in the head to be able to do that. I wasn't. If I'd have gone to university for, I don't know how, how many years people go to university for, actually. I don't know. So if they owe 50,000 and it's 9,000 pound a term, what's that? One, two, three, four, five, about six or seven years. Something like that do they go to university for? If I went to university for six or seven years, it would have been a complete and utter waste of time because I'm not of that mindset. I have no interest in sitting there in a blooming classroom, opening books and taking notes for hours on end. I can't be the only one. When you say we've got to give everyone the same opportunity, what's the point of them going and then it all being a waste of time and ending up with a £50,000 debt? Let them go to work. A lot of them want to go. To, they're pushed into university when they'd rather be cutting up a bit of wood or putting a house up or fixing a car. My nephews and my niece do all right. And none of them went to university. My niece has her own hairdresser's shop. My nephew fixes things, mainly lawnmowers. He buys them very cheap, fixes them, sells them on a profit. And my other nephew has a unit fixing cars, you know, banging cars and then putting filler in and then painting them. How did he learn that? From a book? No, of course he didn't. He went into a garage. Have you got any jobs? Yeah, we'll take you on. They took him on. He watched. He learnt. He repaired. None of this book, opening a book, do that. Oh, Christ. Shania says people are pushed to go to university I was and then had a sense in getting out of it I remember Shania if you don't mind me telling the little bit of the story that I know Shania went to university and she decided she didn't like it so she came out of it good on you good on you you obviously knew it wasn't for you same as I I knew but I didn't even need to go not for me either it's not for everyone so why are, why are they pushed to go Shania, may I ask, and you don't have to ask, answer this if you don't want to, um, when you, 
did you have to, did you end up owing any money at all? Or did you pay as you, I don't know, you don't even know how it works. Did you, did you like pay as you go so you haven't got, a, or have you got a little debt now because of that short time that you went? I'd be interested in knowing that. Of course, you may not want to answer that. So that's fair enough as well, okay? James says, too many university courses now, absolute waste of time. Golf studies, Viking studies. Why would you go to university and learn about Vikings? <laughs> <laughs> the Vikings. I can understand you going to learn about new technology or computer programming or something like that. Viking studies. A lot of them do media studies, don't they? Media studies. I don't know what the hell that was. What's media? It's just reading out of a newspaper, isn't it? James went to university, dropped out after one year, but worked for the Home Office starting in September. It's not for everyone, but it isn't necessary all the time. The Home Office, that's probably a really interesting job, isn't it? Something to do with government or, um, you know, some civil service-y type job. Is it a, will you be a civil servant then? Is that what you'll be? Not quite sure. Hmm? And um, James also says, no problem with working in a shop or learning a trade. Learning a trade is an excellent thing to do. The amount you'd save by doing your own plumbing for a start. Oh, my God, yeah. Mind you, we've got Adam the plumber. We've got Adam the plumber here, boys and girls. And uh, if you need any work done at all, any work done at all, Adam the plumber is the man for you. Just look him up on your Facebook uh, thing. He hasn't got, a, I don't think he's got a call out charge. He's very, very reasonable, all right? Okie doke. Um, we're due to... Ah, uh, Shania says, I've got a little bit of debt, which I'm paying off, but nowhere near what I would have stayed the whole time. Yeah, well done. Will you pay that off as quick as you can, Shania? All right, darling. Whenever you've got a little bit of extra money, go and pay a bit more off. Uh, get rid of your debts as soon as possible. That's my advice to everyone. Get rid of your debts as quickly as you possibly can. All right? Okie doke. Let's do today's birthdays, boys and girls. And then I'm going to feed Ronnie's cats. And then go swimming and collect a few more newspapers for my cat. Happy birthday today to Barry Barnes. Barry, Barry, Barry. Hello, Barry. Is 35 years old on this Friday. Happy birthday, Barry. Uh, Slavo Volek. Happy birthday, Slavo. Looking very good. Laying on a beach there on your Facebook profile thing. Uh, David Hitchin today is, I think you're the granddaddy today, David. 67 years old today. Lovely hat. Happy birthday, uh, David. Gary Hyde. Hello, Gary. Looking good. 50 years old today. Happy birthday, Gary. Charles Robert Spall is 34 years old today. And he's got a picture of a, a dog. He's got a very nice little mane around its head. Happy birthday, Charles. Uh, Leon Anthony, 44. You don't look 44, Leon. You certainly don't look 44, mate. Happy birthday to you, sir. Theo Williams. Happy birthday, Theo. Louise O'Connor. Uh, we've got Susan Groves. Kevin Devalda. Happy birthday, Kevin. 45. London's most prominent skinhead. Aren't you, sir? <laughs> I think you went to Berlin. Didn't you go to Berlin? Always a pleasure to see you, Kevin. I've known Kevin for God knows how many years. About 25 years now. Happy birthday, Kevin. Uh, Sean Kennedy. Happy birthday, Sean. Uh, certainly remember you as well. You're doing well, I'm glad to see. And Ali Tamplin is 36 years old today. So let's do the song, boys and girls. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Have a wonderful birthday, boys and girls. Tonight, it's Friday night, so I'll be hosting karaoke this evening at the Central Station Bar in Wharfdale Road, King's Cross. Uh, we start at half past eight and finish here at 12 midnight. Come along and sing a song. Doesn't matter if you can't sing. We're not interested. Well, we are interested in great singers, but you don't have to be, you don't even have to be able to sing. It's all about taking part. It's very lighthearted. We all have a laugh down there, and that's what it's all about. And it's, we've got kind of a little bit of a family thing going in there as well now. So uh, join us tonight for karaoke at Central Station Bar, Wharfdale Road in King's Cross, every Friday night, starting at 8.30. OK, have a nice Friday, and thank you very much for watching and listening to the show. I'll see you again very soon. Cheerio now.